Okay, we can pray and then start. Our loving Father in heaven, we say thank you for this preparation day. We pray that you may prepare us even for the Sabbath, and not only for the Sabbath, but the, for the second coming of the Son. Pray that our life may be purified, our lives may be made whole, that um, we may bear your image, we may reflect the image of your Son. And uh, in this day, Lord, we want to learn from the continued teaching, so your angels be ministers, but more so, breathe upon us thy spirit, and uh, let thy will be done in our lives for this. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, uh, welcome again. It is uh, a privilege to be here again as we learn and as we prepare for welcoming uh, the, the Sabbath. Welcoming the Sabbath. Just hand me the Bible. And so, uh, as I have said, uh, we are going to have a very special session right now. It is always um, good while learning. We are not um, told to continue just speaking but uh, to make sure that uh, what we are speaking is being understood, what we are talking is people are getting it much better. And so uh, I'd like us to look at a few things uh, and then have a, we can have a breakfast and then we come for some other session. Uh, so before... Uh, we go another level because we have seen about the Father, we have seen about the Son, and we have talked a little bit about the Holy Spirit. But uh, we want to move these things more deeply, and uh, we shall be going into the sanctuary and see how this it applies to our lives, how practical it is. But um, this session, uh, I want to dedicate it to some few questions uh, that. Uh, I may see how we are understanding everything, and uh, we shall just be going this way, around this way. My, maybe if, uh, because I want us to look at Second Timothy. Second Timothy, chapter two. Second Timothy. Let me give you a verse very quickly. Second Timothy. chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 there is a reason why we learn what we learn yeah. and that is what I want you to see now in the scriptures and that is why we are going to conduct this session 2nd yeah. Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 whoever is there Just a you therefore my son be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit those to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. And the things that thou hast heard me of me among many witnesses, do what? 
The same commit thou to faithful men. men or people who shall be able to do yeah. what? To teach us also. also. So the, 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 the main object, the main objective of learning any doctrine is that knowledge may be committed to men who shall be able to go and teach. And that's why Christ was with the disciples for these three and a half years. And then after a thorough education, he tells them, go into the world and make of men disciples, teach them, baptizing them, making them disciples. This is why we conduct seminars. We don't actually conduct, uh, as a ministry, we don't conduct so much about what you hear about crusades or open air evangelistic campaigns. We, we, we arrange our meetings in a way that it is a seminar, yeah. our meetings, so that people are taught, people ask questions, yeah. so that they may get out of the sessions understanding what is being spoken, so that they may be able to go and teach others. Look at the book of John chapter 10. John chapter 10 and uh, verses... Um, Verses 16, John chapter 10, verse 16. Are you there? No. Go ahead and read it. I have other sheep that are not on this sheep hole. Yes. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. So Christ is saying that um, I have other people who have not come into truth. Then also they must be reached and come into truth. Yeah. How are they going to be reached? Through the reliable people. Through the reliable people. People through other people who are this same information, the same people who have the information will go out to bring the people, and this is why I'm conducting this. So, uh, this is it. Uh, and uh, I'll be going through something. Uh, so Maybe, in, in, I'll just like it to be in brief. Maybe our brother Peter, yeah. as we go this round. Uh, somebody may ask you, how long have you known about the Father and the Son message? And even though that may not be uh, for a long time, but how long have you known about the Father and the Son message? It has taken a, a long time because I had the message earlier. Yes. But now it has not taken uh, three months. Uh, about the, and me, I speak about the whole spirit and the God and the Son. It has taken uh, a change, a, another new dimension of God uh, the Father, as I knew earlier. Yes, yeah. I knew that the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit was one. But uh, all of them, they are God. But since I have come to our teacher, or to my teacher, and the other one who is my brother Daniel, I got a diversion of being taught a truth of, the, of God as God is the father of, of these two. Uh, yeah, and uh, my brother Peter, mm -hmm. how, how long have you known that, the, about the father and the son? I can say it's uh, about, uh, about two to three years. Yes. I've known that uh, God, we say, is the, is the, God is the father. Uh, Jesus is the Son, uh -huh. and uh, 
Holy Spirit is the guide of human from the guidance of Jesus Christ. So this is an information you have known for some time, for yeah. two years? About two years, but now mm. I've gotten a, a deeper uh, about knowledge about uh, about the, about uh, the Holy Spirit. So what you're telling me, Brother Peter, is that, uh, or what you're saying is that uh, for two years, no. you you have said for two years, two years? Uh, for, two years. for two years, you uh, you didn't believe in Trinity. You know, uh -huh. uh, when you read more about the Word of God, that's when you you, you have the, the knowledge of knowing about the Trinity. So, when you became a Seventh Day Adventist, were you born in Adventism? Seventh Day Adventist? No, but I came there. Oh, you, was, uh, you were converted? Yeah, converted. Yeah. Uh, you were a Sunday keeper? I was a Sunday keeper by then. When did you become a Seventh Day Adventist? It's about uh, 2015 or 2015. Yeah. Okay. So for at least two years, when you became an Adventist, you you heard about the Trinity, but you are not believing in the Trinity, or you are believing in it. Uh, I was be, uh, believing about the Trinity. Yeah. But in a different uh, understanding. Okay. Yeah. Now. Nah. It's like I'm getting what you're saying. So you you heard about Trinity, but what you are believing was in a different way. Yeah. And uh, Mama, how how long have you known about the Father and the Son? I mean, you, you are from PAG Church, India. Yeah. You are from PAG. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, that is a Sunday keeping church. Yeah. In PAG, they teach about Trinity, right? Yeah. And uh, the truth about the Father and the Son. The understanding different from the Trinity. For how long have you known this? It is uh, yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> yeah. So you are you are new in this I, thing. I, I know mm. that uh, the Father. I knew that in the office of the Father, uh -huh. uh, there is uh, the Trinity. Yes. Who is uh, the God, the Father? Uh -huh. And uh, God the Son uh -huh. and the Holy Spirit. I I know the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit, but they are in one office of God. Okay, so you un you understand under the office of God as a title, we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. No, I know that God uh, the Holy Spirit, not the God. Mm -hmm. I know God the Father. Mm -hmm. God the Son mm. and the Holy Spirit as an office, as an office. not God. Not God. So in your in your teaching of the Trinity in a PAG Church, which is a Sunday keeper, you have God the Father, God the Son, so and the office, office of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. This office of the Holy Spirit. Uh, what do you mean? Can you just uh, elaborate a little more when you say the office of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit not being God? I understand that oh. the the office of God, mm -hmm. not the office of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. In the office of the God, yes. we have God the Father, mm -hmm. the Father, God the Son, mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit. They do work together. That is what I asked. Mm -hmm. If that is the case, then in PhD it's like the Trinity version is so different. You have God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. This Holy Spirit, who is it uh, according to your church? It's a comfort. It's a comfort. It's a teacher. Uh -huh. It's a guide. It's a counselor. Whom does he belong to? Is he God or he belongs? He belongs to the office of the Lord. He, he belongs to the office of God. Yeah. But in PhD, do you believe that the Holy Spirit is God? No, or, or it is just in the office of God? We believe that they do work together. They do work together. But whether it is God or not God, it is not elaborate, elaborated or mentioned. No. Okay. But they elaborate that God, God the Father and God the Son. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit. Yeah. 
Yeah, that is another version of the Trinity I'm hearing you, today. You know what uh, makes people don't understand about the Holy Spirit? We call it it, him, and he. So some people say it's, it's a person. Okay. The, the version, her version, uh, our sister Sarah on PRG about um, the Holy Spirit uh, is something that should be looked in also. But um, so, uh, right now, do you have a different understanding? Yeah. I it's different from what you have been believing? You know? Yeah. Um, yesterday, yeah. Um, come, I came to realize that the Holy Spirit is a witness in, in the world. Or on, on the earth. Because uh, it is uh, too misunderstanding. It is because we don't read the word. Uh -huh. We just take the word literally. That is why many people are misled. That is great. Uh, my question will go back to Brother Peter. Yeah. Uh, if somebody, may, because we are learning to teach, if somebody asked you maybe to prove about the Father, uh, maybe in two verses or three verses. Yeah. Would you like to provide the verses? Maybe if somebody challenged you now that, um, okay, you believe in the Father, being the Father of Jesus Christ, uh, uh, real Father of Jesus Christ, what kind of verses would you provide? Because it will, these are the challenges that people are going to get outside there. Okay. Yeah. Before I go to that question, I want to say that. Uh, that the power of your teaching it has opened our ears in our heart that uh, uh, we have God the Father who inspires Jesus Christ is a spirit and Jesus inspires the members of the believers this was contact contradicting ourselves and even uh, the teachers who taught us about the word could uh, ever frame it as you framed it or as you as we entered in this place in fact if you have tried to frame it so uh, I've come that I might be somebody who is a real person to go and teach others about the prosperity and the God himself because I have the channel now. Yeah, that, that you that know, is, in uh -huh. theology, mm -hmm. you may work, you may, be, you may learn about the word of God but if you, you cannot pass through the, the exams or you cannot understand the, the, the teachings since you have entered that the college, you receive a certificate that you are a preacher. This is what I'm just regretting that I never discovered this. It's I never mean, too late to correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So if the person will approach you. Can you give me two verses that uh, prove the reality that the reality, you know, people say in lip service that the Father is the, uh, God is the Father of Jesus Christ and Christ is the Son of God. But if you will be asked, uh, can you provide even two verses that prove in reality that uh, uh, God the Father, is the Father, the Father of, of God. Jesus Christ? Yeah. What, what verses will you I I will bring chapter 3 of John, chapter 3, verse 16. Chapter 3, verse 16. Which says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten God Son. God is of full love. He is the Father of Jesus. He never considered Him. He is His Son. So, and John 17, verse 10, He says, Father, I say, can, can somebody read? The book of John, chapter 17, uh, verse, verse 10. Verse 10. Yes. All I have is yours. All I have is yours. And all of love is mine. Yeah. And the only has come to me through them. So oh, and all are mine, are thine, and they, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. There is, there is a, a, 
a good verse yeah. that uh, you can point to. Our uh, brother Peter, if you are approached that, maybe give two verses that um, prove the biblical, ontological reality that the God of the Bible is the Father of Jesus Christ in reality. Which verses will you have built? Yes, I can go to John, verse 1, we read it 29. John chapter 1, verses 29. Yeah. John 1, 29. John 1, 29. And this is what uh, the word of the Lord says. Uh, the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. So, uh, you, brought, you, you bring about the, the idea of John 1, 29, and uh, I want you to maybe somehow elaborate more how this appeals to you that Jesus, the Father. Even when we say John himself. Yes was inspired by the Holy Spirit and knew that the Lamb of God is coming. So he's a witness to the Holy Spirit that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Uh, I'll just like to strengthen that if you never knew. In the sanctuary language, yeah. when the people sinned, brought the Lamb. Yeah. And the Lamb belonged to the person to the who was bringing it. In whichever way either he could have gotten it from somewhere and uh, he could um, have taken from his own pen but the the lamb belonged to the one itself what is the next verse that maybe you look to? but you will get a challenge on that but uh, I, I know as we continue learning maybe things will come out clearly but it's a, a good verse also to point out yes now we can go to Isaiah the book of Isaiah mm -hmm. 14, 13. 14. Is that 14, 13? Sorry for that. Yeah. Yes. So we can wait in the uh, the book of uh, Isaiah. Yes. Fourteen verse thirteen. Yeah. It gives it says you have said in your heart I will ascend to heaven. So mm -hmm. I will exalt my throne above the stars of the uh, of God. God. Mm -hmm. So this one shows us that the son the Son of God will ascend to God and will be in his throne above the stars. Now, so, if, if you look at the context of, of chapter, chapter 14, this is talking about uh, Lucifer is the one speaking, not Jesus Christ. Look at it. Oh, yes, 14. 14, 13, it's about Lucifer. Yeah, it's Lucifer. This is not the son of God speaking. Let us go to, yeah, I've seen number 14. From verse 12 say, how thou how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did its weaken the nation? For thou hast said in thy heart, I'll ascend in the heaven, I'll exalt my throne above the stars. This is Lucifer speaking, not the son of God. Yeah. Maybe as he does that now. <coughs> If somebody approached you, that uh, can you prove that the Father is the, fa the God is the Father of Jesus Christ? What will you say? What verses will you point? To? Jesus, the God is the Father of Jesus Christ. We can refer five on John twenty six. John. John chapter five. John chapter five. Verse twenty six. John chapter five, verse twenty six. John chapter five, verses twenty six. And uh, this is what the Bible says. 
For as the Father hath life in himself, so he hath given to the Son to have life in himself. That is a very powerful verse. Yeah. Because you will understand that parents give life yeah. to their children. Yeah. Actually, what will be your next verse? Next verse is from the book of John 17. The book of John 17. Verse 3. Verse 3. Even from verse 1. Verse 1 to 3. Verse 1 says, This, this word spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee. Verse 2, it says, As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given. Now, you understand from verse 2 that the son has been given life. Just as John chapter 5, that... Um, the son has been given life and then now verse 3 it says that um, and this is eternal life that they might know thee the only true god in jesus christ whom thou hast sent and so i find verse 2 of john because verse 2 of john chapter 17 to be more powerful and uh, more in relation with uh, the book of john chapter 5 verses 26 yeah. they are the same thing and so these are the things that indicate that the god the father is the father yeah. of jesus christ uh, brother peter yes yes have you found another verse now we can go to matthew 28 verse 18 where jesus says and jesus came and spoke to them saying or out of it has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Yes, so just in brief, what does the verse uh, uh, tell you? So, so because it's the son, and it's the son, and it's the son of, of God, yes. he has the authority in heaven and the same case in the earth. All power has given, all, all power is has given been to given unto him all power has been given unto him uh, the other thing uh, maybe sister sarah if you are asked uh, to now that is proving that god is the father of jesus yeah. christ how about if you are asked can you prove that christ is the son of god christ maybe a verse that will convince somebody that Christ is the Son of God. You have been proving that God is the Father of Jesus Christ. Now Christ is the Son, is the Son of God. The, uh, John 3, 16, yes. it, it says that for God so loved the world, that he and gave his, his only begotten Son. That is more so a proof that the Father is the God is the Father of Jesus Christ. Yeah. But I'm asking the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe peace. You are understanding my question? Yeah. You are, I'm understanding. You are saying that uh, how can somebody understand that Jesus, prove it, that Jesus is the Son of God? By a verse. By a verse. Yes. That's how it is. Uh, uh, how can I put it? A verse is always better yeah. <laughs> <laughs> than human words because you'll yeah. be caught up with human words. Uh, uh, John 1 1. The son is just to uh, say that he was there during the world was being created. Maybe I'll give you something simple. Okay. John 1 1 only proves the divinity of Jesus Christ, that he is a divine being, but doesn't prove that he is the Son of God. Okay. I'll give you an example then. Look at John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Yes, I am there. Mm. These are the words of Jesus Christ. John chapter 5, and uh, what I'm looking at.
John chapter 5 verses um, 19 and 20. Jesus, give them, give them this answer. Jesus gave them this answer. Very, very truly, I tell you, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his Father doing. Thus. Because whatever the Father does, does the Son also does. Yeah. Verse 20. Verse 20. For the Father loves the Son and shows him in all he does. Yes. And then we show you even greater works than this, so that you will be amazing. Yes. So Jesus Christ is saying that his, uh, the Father, God is his Father. Yeah. And he cannot do anything unless the Father enables. And he says, For the Father loveth the Son and sheweth him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him greater uh, uh, greater things. Even 26, number 26 says, For us the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have love in himself. Yeah. Yeah. That was the proof that um, was the, the Father, God was the Father of um, Jesus Christ. And um, yeah. John 3, 13, John 3, 16 says like that. But John 3, 35. Look at John chapter 5, verses 18. 18. 18. It says, For this reason, they tried all the more to kill him. Not only was the breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his holy father. Making himself equal. So you see, by Jesus Christ calling himself the Son of God, he makes himself equal with the Father. That proves that actually Christ is the Son of God. Yeah. Look at also 10 30, John chapter 10, verse 30. The book of John chapter 10, verses 30. It says, I and my father are one. I and my father are one. I and my father are one. John chapter 10, verses 30. There is um, I and my father are one. Meaning that uh, they are of the same substance. They are of the same substance. I, I'll just go to maybe another thing that. Um, somebody can challenge you with. You know, I, I hope now you are getting the challenges you get. And, yeah. uh, people will challenge you with the answers you will give. Yeah. Because you can be giving an answer that applies to something else and not what somebody is asking. Briefly, in a minute, uh, and maybe with a verse or two, Brother Peter, can you explain the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? As I know, now, yes, I was taught that the Holy Spirit was God, mm -hmm. but by now, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God, according to the Bible, as said. Can you prove that with one or two verses? Uh, Maybe Brother Peter prepared and Sister Sarah also prepares to yeah. give us a verse. Uh, 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 let me try to explain because I do not uh, claim things I do right than I will be able to, to refer. explain or yes. to refer. Yes. So as I'm referring, if the, my sisters and my brother can be able to tell, I can be, I can explain. But the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. first of all, in Acts 1, 8, yes. it says about He is all powerful. But the Spirit of God coming from Him is all powerful. I cannot say that the Spirit of God is God, but the Spirit which comes from Him is all powerful, according to the book of uh, Acts 1 8. And Brother Peter, what 
Will you have a verse in mind to tell somebody that actually the spirit is not another God? Or can you define what is a... In your understanding, how now can you define the what Holy I, Spirit? What yeah. I can say about the Holy Spirit, yes. I can say it's, the, it's a, a help uh, that when Jesus is not here, it's a, it's a helper to us. That's what I can say about the Holy Spirit. Uh, we, do you have any advice that maybe can point us to this? Or if Sister Sarah has something? I mean, you have something already? No, I'm, no, I'm looking for yes. the first year. How will you, what will you tell somebody? Can you define, we are not talking about the nature but the identity. How will, what will you talk about the spirit in briefly if somebody asks you about that? Maybe with a verse or that. Yes. I can say that the Holy Spirit is the, the, the counselor that God sent to his son during the ascension of Jesus Christ. Can say that uh, the Holy Spirit is. Um, repeat the word is uh, what? This is the word you have used. You can say the Holy Spirit is a witness. Counselor or a witness that the Father sent to His Son at His ascension. When He ascended, when he ascended to heaven. To live, or which he was left in the world to be a witness. That Jesus was the Son of God. Um, there is, yes, I, I'll come to that. Uh, can you give a verse? Yeah. Uh, Acts, verse 2, 33. Acts chapter 2, verse 33? Yeah. Yes, Acts chapter 2, verses 33. The book of Acts chapter 2, verses 33. It says, Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he brought out this with you, now see and hear. So the, the, the Holy Spirit is the promise that the Father has received from, from the Son has received from the Father, and he gives to, to his children. I, I just like to remind you of Romans chapter 8, verses 9, that... Um, the Spirit is the Spirit of the Father, and it's the Spirit, the Spirit of the Son. You always have to have these verses, Brother Peter, however old you are. Okay. They are so good because soon the Bibles are going to be taken away, and we shall stand before the council and being told, can you now prove what you are saying? And give us a verse and we look in the Bible. You know, when you came there to your child, yes. when I met my notes, Yes. Once you were starting about the, the, the sanctuary, and my brother Daniel started teaching about the Holy Spirit, is when now what I, I had been telling my or teaching my brethren in, my, in our uh, around villages is what you, you taught me. This is where I was just coming to. Than not switch that I had. So uh, I'm asking God to give that the revelation of mastering the scripture yeah. in my head. You have to ask God to give you that. So, so, so as we have said, the Holy Spirit is just that uh, the Holy Spirit, which means He is righteous concerning uh, concerning His Son Jesus Christ. You can read about this from the book of Romans 1, 3 and 4. Can somebody read? Romans 1, mm -hmm. 3 and 4. Mm -hmm. This is the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. Concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, 
verse 4, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Yeah. The problem has always been, is, God, is the Holy Spirit God? Or where does it come from? So, in, in, the, in, in uh, explaining the Holy Spirit, you have to let the people understand that actually the Holy Spirit is not another God, but it is the bread and life of God, of God and it is through his angels, because angels are ministering spirit, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 7 and Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14, and also you notice in John chapter 6 verse 63, Jesus says that it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing, the ones that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So again, the Holy Spirit is given through the word of God. Yeah. When you were tackling the sanctuary, I heard Brother Fred talking about the oil yeah. in the sanctuary. And you know what? Psalms, uh, Psalms 119, 105 says that thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Yes. And in order for the lamp to burn, what do you need? You need oil for the lamp to light, yeah. Yeah. to burn, okay? Yeah. And that oil is the Spirit. Yeah. And so, the Holy Spirit is the oil. It is the, that light in the Word of God. Yeah. It is that light that gives to the lamp power to burn, to light up. Yes. And so, the Word of God is a mechanism by which he gives the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because thy word is light and life. Yeah. And the Lamb is light and life also. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And so you have to understand that it is the Holy Spirit is coming from the Father and the Son through the angels and through the word of God. That is something that uh, it should be uh, made clear. Okay. Now, Yes, you have something? I was just supporting it from the book of John, first John chapter five, as they were jumping into we discussing this. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, here I quote mm -hmm. the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit are uh, all pair witness with the truth. The Son and the Father are pair the witness of the truth. This is according to the book of First John, chapter five, verse seven. As we who are being learning about the Spirit and God, the Father, as we who are being taught or divided, mm -hmm. we come to the conclusion of knowing that God is a Spirit, is the One, or is One gives the witness about is truth. Okay. Yeah. And uh, there is a verse I didn't tell you that also talks about the Holy Spirit. This one is uh, somehow a good verse also when talking about the Holy Spirit. That is 2 Corinthians 3.17. 2 Corinthians 3.17 and uh, I want us to look at it. 2 Corinthians 3.17. Now you understand that you have a work to do outside there. Yeah in explaining the truth. And you will meet challenges, and these challenges you have to meet them with that said the Lord, not that said Sami or that said Daniel Mesa or yeah. anyone, yeah. not Fred, no. There's nothing like that said Daniel Mesa, Sami or Fred. No. no, no, it is that said the Lord. Yeah. Jesus Christ overcame Satan by quoting the scriptures. Yeah. Verbatim, yeah. the way they are. Second Corinthians 3.17. So the Lord is that spirit. So we don't have another God, the Holy Spirit. No. The Lord Jesus Christ in is that spirit. spirit. He comes into us in a spiritual way. The Holy Spirit doesn't come as another God. It is the Lord Himself coming in a spiritual way. You remember the verses He said that. Uh, he dwelleth with you, but he will be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I'll do what? I'll come to you. Yeah. And also, look at... Um, so, 
the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God, the manifestation of God in a sp spiritual way, the manifestation of Jesus Christ and, and God in a spiritual sense. Psalms 139. Psalms 139, verses um, 139. Let us go to Psalms 139. Start, start from verse 7. Yes. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I go from your spirit? spirit. Whose spirit? God. God's spirit. Continue. Where can I flee from your presence? So, Sister Sarah, I want you to pause for a minute and uh, I want you to understand what you are reading. Maybe, and I told you when, uh, when we are reading the scriptures, don't let somebody think for you and understand the verse for you. Don't let that happen, okay? Understand the verse yourself. So from what you are reading, just I want you to read again and you tell me something. Where shall I go from? Where shall I go from? So from the words written there, what do you understand of the Spirit? The Spirit is God. The Spirit is God himself. No, no, I want you to look at the verse. We call it an open book test when we are studying with little children. You don't have to use words which are outside the verse. You just look at the verse and use the verse itself. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? Uh -huh. So what do you understand? Uh, here is living. How he how he is asking how he where because the the spirit of God is present. Now that is the thing that I'm looking for. The spirit of God is his omnipresence. Yeah. So God uh the spirit of God is present by his spirit. God is in heaven on the throne. But he is present by? By the Spirit. By the Spirit. So, where shall I go from thy Spirit? And then he says, where shall I go from your presence? Yes. So the Spirit is the presence of God. Yeah. That is what I want you to understand. That is what the verse is saying, not what I want you to understand. That is what the verse is saying. Yeah. The Spirit is the presence, of omnipresence of? God. of God, of the Father and the Son. So it is not somebody else. It's not another God. No. It is their own presence. They are physically in heaven. Christ is in heaven. And the Father is in heaven also on the throne. Mm. Judgment is going on in heaven. Mm. But they are present in the church and on earth by their spirit. Mm. It is their economical presence. Their invisible presence. Mm. The spirit is not another human, another divine being just going around and flowing everywhere, floating everywhere. No. It is the presence of the Father and the Son. And that's where it brings their comfort. It brings their personality, their mind, their character, and uh, their, their fruit to the believer. So Psalms 139. Can you continue? So can we say that God, uh, now, uh, the, the Spirit of God, oh, the Spirit is the personality of God. I, I want you to repeat that. Can we say that the Spirit is the personality, the personality of God and the Son? The personality of, the, of God and the Son. Now, that is a good idea and that's a good question. But I'll ask you, what do you mean by personality? If I can understand from, from her, it says when there is and God and where there is the, and where is God? God is not there. The Holy Spirit is there. Where what do you understand by personality? <laughs> Brother? Because... Peter is bringing something and I want you to understand, tell us what you understand by personality. Yeah, I know. Oh. Uh, God is personality, is his own, his own present, he has mind, he's a holy. 
the nature, I mean the nature of God. So the spirit is, is he representing the nature of God to the world. The spirit is representing the nature of God. Do you understand when you say, and uh, when you say personality, and you say about nature, do you believe that um, the spirit, as you say, it's a personality? It is something that has uh, a form, a form, let, let me say a form. You understand what I mean? A form of a Meaning a form having of bodily parts. Yeah. Does the Holy Spirit have a past bodily parts? Huh? Is there a spirit? Does the Holy Spirit have personal uh, body parts? No. Yeah. When you say personality, you mean? I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean God Himself. Now God is a, is not present in the world. Yes. Is in heaven. Yeah. Now the Spirit is working now in the in the earth. You are talking about the nature, the mind, and uh, what do you understand? When I understand from the very beginning, uh -huh. we read that uh, when God was creating the, the world, uh -huh. the whole spirit was there. Yeah. So I, uh, I can say that uh, the whole spirit the Holy Spirit is there, uh -huh. and the God Himself is everywhere. Uh -huh. When we learn from uh, the book of uh, uh, Psalms, it said, Where can I go where God will not see you from the presence of God? So it means the Spirit is there, and uh, God is everywhere. Okay. Let me, let me say about the, the nature as I was... Oh, hold on, Peter. There is oh. something saying that God is everywhere. Oh. Won't it be a problem? Will it not create a problem when you say God is everywhere, yet we are saying God is in heaven on throne? He's in heaven, but the presence of God is everywhere, and He sees everything. So when, when the, we say the Son is not there, the Holy Spirit guides people here on earth. There is something I, I, I like you to remember. Yeah. The Father and the Son are in heaven, yeah. physically. Yeah. But they are yeah. omnipresent by the Spirit. Yeah. The Spirit is, um, when we talk about, she introduced a word, which is a big word, personality. Another definition of the word personality when people talk about personality, they think of you something that has body yeah. and has body parts. But another definition of personality is mind, mind. character, yeah. and all that. Yeah. So when we talk about God being present in a believer as a personality, we are talking of a mind. In fact, I'll, I, I'll be coming to that question just in a, a moment because you had something to okay. say. Okay. Mm. Uh, he say, she said that the God, uh, the, 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 the Spirit, has a nature, mm -hmm. nature of the whole Spirit. When we search of the nature of the whole Spirit, we are referring to the basic qualities which des describe him to the Bible teacher, teachers. That the whole Spirit is omnipresent. He is present. He is present everywhere, according to the book of Psalms 139. Mm -hmm. He knows all things. This is according to the book of Corinthians, First Corinthians. Can somebody read First Corinthians chapter two, verse ten and nine and eleven? He is omniscient. But God had sealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit decided all things, yea, the deep things of God, for what man knoweth the things of a man. Except the Spirit in the man. So who knows the, the things of God except the Spirit of God in him? Yeah. 
First Corinthians. That is First Corinthians chapter two or Second Corinthians? Uh, first Corinthians chapter two. Chapter two, first. 10 and 9, 11. I, I, I have seven minutes, then we go to, to breakfast. My uh, brother, I, you can extend, please. Because okay. meals will pass. But this, there is, we are just building our scripture stamina, please, please. Okay. Yeah. We talked about the personality. Mm -hmm. Sister Sarah introduced, our Mama Sarah introduced something yeah. called personality. Okay. And this is very essential for you to understand what you are talking about when you talk about personality nature and all that the nature of the spirit actually i can say it is not something you can describe because the spirit we are told it is water it is wind it is fire so you cannot pin to the world this is the nature of the holy spirit but you can define the the fruit of the spirit the effects of the Holy Spirit, yeah. and you can be able to understand where does the Holy Spirit come from. Yeah. So the nature itself, when you start speaking about nature, somebody will say, you know, because the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit being fire. So when you say the Spirit is fire, it says the Holy Spirit is water. Will you again now shift the Holy Spirit is water? The Holy Spirit is oil. So the nature it is something that we cannot per se speak a lot about it. But the effects of the Holy Spirit and where it comes from. The attributes, as you are saying, the mind, love, humility, and all these things. When now a believer, a person believes in God, he is given uh, the Holy Spirit which carries the attributes of God. Love, humility, humbleness temperance and all these things. Mm -hmm. That is what the Holy Spirit brings in a believer. Mm -hmm. And this brings, so the personality are the attributes, somehow the attributes. Mm -hmm. Now, you should never confound God with his spirit. God is in heaven. Mm -hmm. And he is present by his spirit. Mm -hmm. Physically in heaven, but his presence is here with the spirit. Mm -hmm. It is something that he can send forth, but human being cannot do that. Mm -hmm. You said that yes. We are limited in certain ways, but mm -hmm. God is not limited. Yeah. So it is something that comes from Him to maintain a connection between earth and heaven. Yeah. To maintain a connection between Christ and the Father and the Son. Yeah. It, it's something that is a mystery, but you can understand it is attribute, the effects in your body yeah. and the effects in your life. That brings us to our question. When we talk, Mama, that the Holy Spirit is in you. Do you understand us that a person or a being, another being is in you? What would you understand when I say that uh, 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 that um, God is in you or Christ in you? What do you understand? Because the Bible says that Christ is in us. The book of Colossians 1.27 says that Christ in us the hope of glory. And it says that, don't you know that you are the temple of God? So what do you understand when somebody says that Christ is in you or God is in you? The, the, spirit. the spirit of Christ is in you. And not another by, being. By the soul. By the soul. And not another being. Yeah. And not another person with maybe body parts or what, yeah. something of that kind. Yes. We understand that uh, is the mind of God, the character of God, the life of God in him, in the person. But it comes through the word of God. It comes through the angels. It comes through God breathing upon you, giving you a, a new life. Maybe you have something, when somebody says that God is in you, Christ in you, how, how do you understand it? I am now. Yes. Oh, there is a way you understood it. Yeah. It's, it will be good to understand how you, you people knew it. Uh, yeah. Now, you have brought in something good. How, how did you understand before? Uh, no, uh, let me say, yeah. uh, before, before the teachings, I understood that the, the Spirit of God was upon me. But now, as I have known, I was just knowing that the Spirit God himself was the spirit, and that the spirit, you know, English is somehow a different. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We as Asian tribe, we do not go eloquently as you can. Uh. So, 
may I not bring a problem when yeah. I'm explain, explaining. So I knew that the Spirit of God was upon me, but the big problem was that the Spirit was God. Yeah. This was the big problem. So I understood that the God himself, the Spirit, which I decided that he was the third person in God's kingdom, was upon me. I never knew that the Spirit of God was to be in me. Or the spirit of his son will, will be in me. I knew that the third person who is God is also in me now. Brother Peter, how did you understand before when it says God is in you or Christ in you? Leave alone what we have learned. How, how did you understand it? Uh, before. Okay. Yeah, I was, uh, I was moving that uh, the whole spirit is a different thing. It's not the. Jesus Christ is not God. It's just another, another person, another third person, doing his his work around. Mm -hmm. But now we can say there are uh, one people. How did you understand? Or what do your church teach when it says that God is in you or Christ is in you? Have you, ever, have you ever covered that in your church? Have you ever learned about this in your church? That the God is in me. Yeah. There are verses that says God is in you and Christ is in you. In the Bible, they are there. Yeah, and can you divide that, that word, Jesus is in you? Know are yeah. you able to type Jesus? Are you able to type the Holy Spirit? Spirit. The Spirit? Are you able to type the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. oh. What did you understand? What do you understand? Uh, or you can you, even give us what your church understands. I know they understand that the, the Trinity of God is there. Yeah. But when I read in John, I don't remember that it's John 7, which says that when you when my word being John 7, what's on this? Tell me what it says, I'll give you the verse. Can help you search it. John 7, 7. It says what? Can you remember, can you paraphrase what it says? When? when my word gives him. Uh -huh. I know that the word of God is a living thing. Uh -huh. And uh, the God is the word, or Jesus is the word. Uh -huh. So when I, when, when I, 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 I live, be reading this word, uh -huh. I I receive life from the word. Amen. From Jesus. Amen. That is a, a good one. Because John six sixty three says that uh, the word the words I speak to you are spirit and life. Yeah. And um, what you are saying, the word of God when it lives in you, it is um I don't know if you are referring to um, it is in John chapter six. You are talking about look at John six, uh, John chapter six, verses thirty three, and tell me if that is what you are talking about. It is fifteen. John chapter fifteen. Chapter fifteen, verse five. Yes. Okay, you are clean because of the words that I have spoken to you. To you. John chapter fifteen, verse. Five. Verse five. Yes. I am the vine; you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. John 6, 33 says, For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. 
and we were reading yesterday from John chapter 14, if the word, if you love me, keep my commandments, and my father and I will come and manifest myself unto you. Maybe if you get the verse, you will share with us. But I like what you are saying that if the word of God dwells in you, you will receive life. Because the word of God is life. Um, um, Marim, can, you, can they read that book that, uh, that God, uh, the Spirit is on me? Science. According to the book of First Corinthians, as I said. First Corinthians two ten. And eleven. And uh, and uh, Acts is five. It one, says one, three and four. We read about the Acts. First Corinthians chapter yeah. two verse ten. Yeah. It says Yes. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit is such as all things, yes, the deep things of God. Yeah. And then Acts, and then? Acts 5, 3 and 4. Acts 5, 3 and 4. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine hand to lie to the Holy Ghost? and to keep back part of the price of the land. Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart, that thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God? Yeah. So the spirit is omniscience. Yeah. The spirit belonging to God is omniscience. It knows all things. Maybe the spirit of God. The spirit of God. Yeah. Maybe the last thing. If you abide in me, okay, this is the verse that you are referring to, that if the word of God is in you, then you will receive life. This is John 15, 15 verse 7. Uh, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Maybe last uh, things. Uh, I don't know if uh, now she is not a Seventh Day Adventist. She she's not a but um, have you ever gone through the? She was. She was. She was. You were brought up in Seventh Day Adventist Church. Yeah. Then you were married. Yeah. <laughs> and then you went to PAG. Yeah. This <laughs> we are in a crisis. Don't you think that we are in a crisis? <laughs> what made you go to PAG? What did made you leave Seventh Day Adventist? So you know that the fourth commandment should be kept at the Sabbath. Yeah. But now you are going to church on Sunday. Yeah, I'm, I'm a believer. And he was Jesus telling me Christ. that uh, just I'm not to keep. He said to do that uh, every day is a good day. He says why we keep uh, the the Sabbath holy. Now that 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 day already we keep it all. He was asking. He was trying to to say so. On no, Monday, Sister Sarah, <laughs> <laughs> we have the fourth commandment: keep the Sabbath day holy. Yeah, holy. Yeah. And that Sabbath day is the seventh day. God is particular. You understand that? That is how you were brought up before you were married. Yeah. yeah and uh, the commandments remain: that the Sabbath day is the seventh day. You can't change it. You can't change the law of God. You cannot change the law. You cannot change the law. Mualim, can we come to the question once when we we have a session of asking questions? Is when we shall answer. Yeah, yeah. Answer because God. you have said you moved from SDA to PAG. Yeah. 
that is a long story that maybe you look into because you cannot change the law of God. And but uh, ah, about when you reach to the certain families, uh, I, 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 to... I'll try to answer that. I'll try to answer that. So this is the this is in your marriage, is it? Yeah. Yes. And you have children. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I, I was coming to the last question for the Seventh Day Adventist. Now, I don't know if you have gone through the fundamental beliefs of Seventh Day Adventist. Yeah. Yes. Have you gone through them? Yeah. Sorry, but uh, we have. Uh, Do you find them having any problem? But uh, they are twenty-eight. But uh, my brother, uh, there is that session huh? when you can go there. Was you can go there. That's no problem. So was, uh, you, you have never gone into detail with the same. We know, we know that, but we need to go deeper. So you can't say at this point if there is a problem or not a problem. If this a problem, as my sister is saying here, huh? the fundament of uh, SDA and the fundament of uh, BH is uh, different. No, no, but I'm asking the two of you. Mm -hmm. Not her. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not asking about PH because I don't know their fundamental beliefs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, huh? I say that uh, I cannot the uh, crime it. Yeah. But I know what is taking place mm -hmm. uh, by now. I don't know whether my brother has that problem or is just grinding the question. Yeah. But I, I have all things here. So I, I think I'll, I'll stop here. Mm -hmm. um, or on the on maybe what we have learned because we have 28 fundamental beliefs in SDA. You must know them. Because if you don't know them, you don't know if there is a problem or if there is no problem. Otherwise, uh, uh, I just praise the Lord that uh, He has uh, given us this time to have this session. And uh, I know we'll be coming in more for more and all that. And uh, God be with us. Mm. us. Yes. We, we we were the book of Psalms one thirty nine. The book of Psalms one thirty nine. We had something to say, mm -hmm. but because we started asking questions, I don't know what we were saying. Oh, you don't understand what I was saying. I I I knew that the, we were talking about the spirit. Where can I go from the spirit? Yes. And where can I be from your presence? Yes. We talked about that, but I don't know where. There was a verse which we wanted to say, but we. That is the verse that I wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. Psalms 109, verse 7. That the Spirit is the presence of God. Yeah. God is in heaven, but He is with us by His Spirit. Physically, he is Jesus Christ and God are in heaven, but they are here in an economical sense, not in a physical sense. Yeah. Because if you say God is in heaven and also He is here, and you confound with His spirit, the problem we we'll run into is that if you say God is everywhere, the spirit is everywhere. The spirit is everywhere, but God is not everywhere. He is in heaven, but he is everywhere by his spirit. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. If uh, Peter, I can say that uh, you are everywhere. And um, you have to understand that you are not in the next room. Yeah. So I'll be, when I say you are everywhere, there is a way that you should understand it. Yeah. When the, 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 the Bible says God is everywhere, Huh? Now, uh, you have said that Peter, for example, Peter is in here, yeah. but he knows, maybe, you know, oh, let me use you. Yeah. You are here, uh -huh. but your mind can be in the other room, which you know. You, you, are, yeah, you are bringing in a very good idea. Yeah. 
I'm everywhere. Yeah, in but mind. In mind. But physically, I am. Um, here. Yes, you are bringing what actually should be brought up. Yeah. That uh, God is physical in heaven, Amen. but His mind, His mind. spirit, yeah. knows everything. By the virtue of knowing everything, we will say that God is everywhere. So you can say, Sam is in the next room, because I know what is in this room, yeah. by my mind. Your, your mind is there. I know everything is yeah. there. Yeah. Because... I live in this room and I know it. So yeah. that is using a crude language, uh, not the best language, but that's how we can view. God is physical in heaven, but because he knows everything and his spirit yeah. is sent forth, then we can say God is everywhere. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Is, it is it what you are saying, Mama? Yeah. yeah. But God is in heaven. Yeah. I am here, but you can say I'm in the next room yeah. by virtue of knowledge, yeah. knowing. We, we have to understand, you say that Kisi, they have a problem with English. I'm trying to understand what you are saying, but yeah. I hope we are together. Yeah. By knowledge, God is everywhere. Knowing what will be there. We, uh, like uh, I was talking to a brother, like I can say, God is in 2020. Yeah. Have we reached 2020? No. We have not reached 2020. Has God reached there? No. Yes. <laughs> in which way? You know, that's he Psalms, knows. That, that Psalms 1. 39 verse 5 or you start from verse 1 let us go there let just, us go there just that's the mind uh, uh, comes up closer Psalms 139 verse even verse 4 we start from verse 4 and 5 let us go to even, Psalms 139 even in verse 1 we start because I am very much happy that we can mean to discuss about our start about this one that nine verse four. You have searched me. You said you have searched. You are looking at verse. Verse one. Okay, verse one. Starting from verse one. Okay. You know, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. Yeah. You perceive my thoughts. You perceive from my thoughts. Afar. Yes. From afar. That is verse two. Mm -hmm. You discern my going out and my lying down. Mm -hmm. You are familiar with all my ways. That's what I wanted. God is familiar to us. That is the, that's why the spirit of him is in this. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. Yeah. Thou knowest and all my ways. ways. Yes, continue. Before I word is on my tongue, before a word is on my tongue, mm -hmm. Lord, know it completely. You know it completely. Omniscience. Yeah. God is omnipresent yes. by omniscient. Yeah. God is everywhere by his knowledge. Yeah. Continue. And you hear me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Continue, verse 6. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Go even to them. Such knowledge continue up to such ten. knowledge. Age. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Such too loved for me to attain. Yes. Where can I go from your spirit? Uh -huh. Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, mm -hmm. if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your mm -hmm. hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. That is verse 10. That is the end. Yes. Uh, this shows that uh, there is somebody who can give up drive. There's no place that he can hide himself because the Spirit of God will search and see where he is. Yes. So we don't give up. Though we may pass through calamities, we must understand that the Spirit of God is always searching us. That's how it is. So, so the one of the omniscient comes there now. Yeah. Yes. He knows everything. The omniscient comes there. Yeah, yeah. I like the way Mama you are understanding it every now and then. I don't know what you are going, you are going back to your church <laughs> because you are going to have trouble and we will talk about the Sabbath because the Sabbath still stands. And But 
Let us narrow ourselves to what we are saying, that actually the presence of God, God is present by omniscient. The omniscient now comes in the, in the omnipresence. Omnipresence because of omni, omniscient. Because he knows everything. Such a knowledge, knowledge is omniscient. Yeah. Knowledge has to do with omniscient. So thank you so much for the session. It's good always to ask questions. Yeah. Because you can be reading verse and verses and verses, yet people are just writing. They don't understand what they are writing. Mm -hmm. And so it is good to revisit what we have learned and understand what we have read. So we can add a word of prayer and then we take our breakfast. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we know that uh, you love us and uh, you want to teach us not only to have knowledge but this character to be revealed in us. We thank you so much for this session we have had with our brethren, the questions of answer, our questions, the session of questions. And uh, I just pray that that which we cannot explain, the Spirit, Lord, which searches everything and is the Spirit of truth, may continue revealing unto us the deep truths of your word. That Lord, we may not be left to wander and be taken away by winds of doctrine. Thank you for this prayer and thank you for my life. We want to be under the tutorship, under the teacher, Jesus Christ Himself, the greatest one. And uh, we know that this Sabbath and this day, you are going to reveal yourself unto us. It is in Jesus' name we pray and trust. Amen. Amen. Amen.